All right, how's it going, everyone? We have a guest with us today. Our guest is Femi. How have you been? I've been I've been okay. It's been um, a very interesting year since we spoke. Um, I find that um, I've been craving more stability in mm. life and like more slowing down. This year also, I've had to consume so much uh, information and knowledge, and sometimes it feels a bit uh, a bit clogged up. But mm -hmm. I'm glad that we're in, the, we're in these um, um, end of the year times so I can really reflect. And that's why this conversation is, uh, is important for me as well. Absolutely. And that's kind of why I wanted to do it sort of at the end of the year, because it, it gives us and others an opportunity to sort of reflect, but also project on the next year that is that is coming. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I agree, and uh, it 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 couldn't have been more timely, especially with things getting um darker, days getting darker, the cold is looming in. There's it's a bet it, there's no better time to really reflect and to project on the new years. Yes, I agree. Yeah, and stability is really important too. So, what sorts of things have you been doing, if you don't mind me asking, to create and sustain that 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 um, stability in your life? I mean, I've been, that's what I've been craving mostly. I found that uh, to jump right into it, like uh, to change my LBRP, to really oh. focus on dragging the spirit down to earth. Because I knew for the times, the past two years, when I performed the LBRP, of course, sometimes I try not to be over um, focused on the direction of the star. But when I started actively craving, um, um, simplicity and stability I started to consciously see if maybe I need to drag in more earth into me that's yes. funny I, it, it must be in the air because that's what I've been doing the last probably five or six months is really just going back to the basics trying to simplify things and create a sense of stability it's it's been less about um it's been less about like planning and preparation and um, actually building and constructing the rituals and ceremonies and more about trying to get in touch with the philosophy and yes. get into a deeper understanding of, okay, where am I in my life? Where am I on the path? And what does that mean for these symbols? Mm -hmm. I agree. For you, have you felt that uh, there ha there's been some times where you feel overloaded with rituals or that you stop for some time. Yeah, absolutely. And how do you um, deal with that? Um, either because I've been doing the same thing too many times or too often and it stagnates or because I, I'm not in touch with the heart of the ritual and I don't mm. quite grasp um, what it is that I'm actually striving for. And so when that happens, I do take a step back. And I will mm -hmm. just sort of meditate or do visualizations or things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. And one thing that has struck me as well during the year is, um, so I've been a solitary practitioner for quite some time, but then I just got into a relationship. And I thought that that was very interesting to see because uh, um, nothing has really challenged my practices as sharing a space with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yes and yeah. and that can be very transformative but also very challenging at the same time yes yes have you dealt with something like that but that's something i've been thinking about recently yes uh so i've been i have a partner that i've been with for 12 years and it took us almost a decade to even get mm -hmm. in the same space for more than just like a simple blessing or prayer because mm -hmm. When you bring somebody else into your space, you start to realize we think about things a little bit differently. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we yes. might be that we might be intoning the same word, but it might have a different effect or it might have a different meaning. Yes. And I agree absolutely. Yes. You, yeah, go ahead. Go on. No, go on. Uh, I was just gonna say, as soon as you start to well, it's like when you mix red and blue, you don't have red and blue anymore. You have purple. Yeah, yeah, true. And it's like there's yeah. this new thing now. 
Yeah. And and that's that that's the new thing that I've been finding, trying to find more clearly. Because usually because of these um these contrasts of beliefs, like you say, is why I don't I prefer a lot of times to carry my magical practices still very personal to me because I know it's something I enjoy and it's something I love. And the connotations, the words might be completely different, even though we have basically a universal understanding of them. <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been interesting to navigate, but I have found that um, I've not been able to perform as elaborate of rituals mm. as I would mm -hmm. um, as I would want. Yeah, yeah. But that's where um, um, other rituals come into play. Like uh, I, I I really like how Liberesh has been treating me, because it's really like something you can proclaim and declare. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And you can really feel the effect of it throughout the day as well yes. hmm. so the, the other thing that is kind of interesting i've found working with someone else is it's almost like my when i'm in my, the home alone and i'm doing a ceremony it's like i can feel my stream of consciousness going to where i'm focused but when i have someone else in the room or in the space it's like I can feel the gravity of their consciousness yeah. pulling my intentions and my thoughts toward them in sort of like a vortex. Mm -hmm. So that's also something that you kind of have to get used to as well, is there's mm -hmm. another gravity in, in the space with you. Have you, know, have you experienced that? Of course. Um, and if we even talk about it symbolically, how um, the human is likened to the sun, and with the whole gravitational pull around you, it's it, people say in a relationship or being with somebody at all is a collision of two worlds, collision of two ah. suns, uh -huh. and it's a different way of navigating. Which I I I, I mean I like all journeys, and all journeys are, are sacred, and I look forward to seeing how I can better be my practitioner self. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah, that's that's that is the um, sort of the drive is to like become like all that we can be or or whatever you know and and I think that having someone else allows for a deeper sense of reflection because it 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 bites right through all of the delusion when hey, when you yeah. have someone else they can say you know that's this not. Is yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yep, yep, you're up in the clouds. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. um mm -hmm. go ahead. No, I said it, it helps to reframe the mind for sure. And yeah. to um to have a more I mean to not be so stuck in my silo, you know, yes. to share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and and that brings up to me the image of the tower and the tarot, you know, and how we can create these beliefs that and they don't serve us in, in the end so yeah, they, they could serve us initially but then yeah. there, there would be a time for change as mm -hmm. per all times yeah mm -hmm. yeah so um when you mentioned that you created changes to the lbrp without getting too personal um were you just changing around the like the formulas or were you changing around what names you were using or is that something that you can even talk about no, I what I do is just change the direction in which I'm drawing okay. the star. Yes, okay. which is, is in the Golden Dawn, like uh, Israel Regardi, they talk about it, how wherever direction of the star you're pointing or dragging down from is either you're banishing Earth or invoking okay. spirit, so on and so forth. So I started more focusedly, like invoking more Earth. Okay, so yeah, I you're talking about bringing that down. Okay. Bring that I didn't down. know if because it was a different... I didn't know if there was a different um, like God name that you were using at the quarters or something, but you just changed the point of the geometry that you're focused on. Yeah. Yes. No, I, at one time I tried yes. to change the, the God names, but then I feel I like, I like it traditional. I mean, I, I like it how it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah if, it's, if it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think about if I should uh, incorporate more African or Nigerian God names and like mapping out these um, these absolutes, these uh, these uh, what the archetypes mm -hmm. from 
like um, the Nigerian cosmology into this, but then it seemed like so much work, and I I like it how it is. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us have have strived to do something similar at, at some point, and some people, you know, are are successful, and some people realize that well, wait, I didn't need to do anything different, you know, at all. It worked to begin with. So yeah, I um I found that um the LVRP is is one of the most simple but effective rituals um, mm. from like the golden dawn ceremonies. I, um, I've tried it in so many different ways. I've tried it in so many different places and it seems like you can't do it incorrectly. It, it mm. seems like no matter how you do it, something is being affected. And I think that's one yeah. of the most powerful things about it. And what I like and what they say about it is you just do it because people always keep worrying about uh, messing it up or messing up the words, but a ritual done is better than no ritual at all. Right. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Have you, and I've been meaning to ask, have you thought more about um, technomancy or the involving of magic and technology? It seemed like that might have been something you would have gone more into. Yeah, I am. Um... I have been working to many people's dismay with AI a lot when it mm. comes to philosophy and, and my practice. But um, one of the major things I'm trying to do is, is understand our relationship to AI. Because from what I can tell, AI mimics the unconscious mind and that it is a matrix that you put something into and then it associates that information with, with what it has, and then it gives you something else. And that, to me, is one of the most effective representations of the unconscious mind that I've come across. I absolutely agree. And I think about how it will affect philosophy in that it has a more general view of morality yes. than we have, which is yes. so interesting. Because ideally, the more we train this AI or the more we train it with uh, all our like little information, mm -hmm. it really has a more general view of humanity. It's really more human than we can imagine, which I think is interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Elon Musk mentioned one time in a Joe Rogan interview how um, the Internet is a reflection of our id. It's a mm -hmm. reflection of of our shadows and our egos as well, which I think scares a lot of people. But I think when you remove the human element from our shadow impulse, it gets a little less scary, I think. But yes. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I thought about it as well, because um, people tend to fear this thing like it's going to be coded to be malevolent. But if we get to that space where it can be or um, it can affect our lives. I feel it might be a bit more general than we think. It might not be as maleficent. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we're as humans, we're like, we tend to stretch toward extremes. Like, yeah. like AI is either going to be an Oracle of the future or like the Terminator. And, yeah. and life just doesn't really happen that way. You know, everything yeah. is sort of an amalgam. So yeah, but I I have I have used AI to write rituals and ceremonies. I've used AI or SI. I I almost prefer to think of it as synthetic intelligence as opposed to artificial, but that's neither here nor there. Um I've used <laughs> it for writing ceremonies and rituals. I've used it for um just all all kind probing basically my my own consciousness and seeing what it thinks of other like I'll pose it scenarios. And I'll, and I'll see what it says. And then I will try to create a framework um, where it thinks it's a human, basically. Mm -hmm. And then I will ask it questions and try to see, because my, my, my um, opinion, I guess, is that what it thinks is human is the compilation and the amalgam of what everyone else has put into it. So it's almost like when you're talking to it, it's like you're talking to the child of humanity you know to a yeah. very very small impure degree but at the same time it's a general like you said i can't think of a better way to put it it's very general and i think whenever you 
tap into something like that. It's it's a powerful thing. <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's quite fascinating. And um, it's quite fascinating for how we can probe our unconscious, our own unconscious, especially if you train an AI with um, a lot of yourself. However, I did have an interesting experience today because I found this AI to game creator where you type in like um, with string, with words, and then it would create the code and create the game. And wow. um, I needed uh, I needed light. In, in the game world and then I typed let there be light then I was like oh wait <laughs> <laughs> I was like wait this is interesting and it made me start to ponder about the nature of our world or um, I feel the, the, the very existence of AI poses such a philosophical question to our experience and it's very hard to point any fingers or to say anything concretely, of course, but I just think it's an interesting thought pattern that has been born. I think it is too. And I like to think of, I like to try to figure out where the cyber plane is. Like, mm -hmm. is it is it on the etheric plane? Is it on the astral plane? Is it is it a connection? Like, I know it's made of electricity, like mm -hmm. to some degree, which makes it like Malkuthian and mm -hmm. of earth. But at the same time, like, there's fire there, there's water there, there's wind there. So, like, I try to figure out, like, where on the tree, like, the cyber plane is and and affects. And that just, that really gets me going. <laughs> I like how you say it's Malkuthian. Another thing I like to, to think about is how each, each point mirrors itself. Yes. And hence, if it's the very densest of Malkuthian, there might be like elements of spirit that we can't really see. However, there's one interesting thought I had as well, because people, we like to separate technology from the natural or from the spirit, but it inherently is part of our existence. Wi-Fi or radio waves are very natural. Yes. Which is very interesting. They are part of our experience and i wonder how to place them as well or if there is even a separation in the first place exactly yeah it's like um like is the marrow separate from the bone yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah very interesting interesting um thought processes i wonder what would happen as we start to expand like um processing power with quantum computing and have it more general like you say, oh, and the thing is, people oh, people are afraid of um, our data being stolen. I have a worldview that it's going to be taken from us anyway. Like um, nobody thought that all of Reddit's data would be bought by chat by OpenAI, but they mm -hmm. sort of own it, which is um, which yeah. is interesting. And so our data is gone anyway. So we are going to train something. Something is going to be trained yeah. off of a lot of data, and I wonder what that would pose on the world. Yeah. And I mean, then then we start to get into like uploading our own consciousness, like yeah. when when we pass away so that our loved ones can still interact with us. There's the frontier is is very open. <laughs> yes, yes. Very, very. So what what is. sorts of things have you done? Uh, I know that you are currently invested in uploading um, a lot of information um, mm -hmm. So under what capacity are you involved with with technology and 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 stuff like that, I guess, is what I'm asking. So I um I know that data is important and data is, is gold. So I've really been digitizing African heritage and African culture because, first of all, sometimes when museum directors or um, or other curators come to ask me why, what is the point of this? I know it can seem frivolous to just want to keep digitizing stuff and like hoarding uh, the physical. However, I feel like I'm adding to some sort of, like you say, unconscious. If I can have these symbols, especially from like um, the current models are being trained of a lot of Western um, Western ideas. If I can have a data source of, of, um, of African stuff, I feel like I'll be contributing somehow to the future. Hmm. Well, and there's no telling what has the capacity to contact that information yes yes i you, agree you, we I, have no idea what can 
what can read those files. Yeah. There, yeah, there yeah. might be super terrestrial beings or there might be, I don't know, like microbiological life forms that are learning from that information. Who knows? Who knows? I, I think of it like a message in a bottle. Yeah. I've done my part. Yes. <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> That's a beautiful <laughs> metaphor. I love that. And, and, what and it's, I like, it's also, go ahead, please. I was going to say what I like about practitioners is how um, the magic would seep into your work somehow. And I think that's interesting. Absolutely. I'm I'm sort of encountering that with, with the YouTube channel because in the back of my mind is like one solar flare and it and it's all gone. You know, mm -hmm. what what's the point of doing all this if it, you know, like the grid goes down? But I have this feeling, I have this inherent intimation that every video I upload is like dissolving into the collective unconscious or is dissolving into matter itself and integrating into the very fabric of life somehow yeah and to that i would um i would give you this interesting story that i heard over the weekend so um i went to this talk where so cern as you know cern mm -hmm. the place with the large hedron collider they have an arts department Mm -hmm. And the curator and her head of arts at CERN was talking about places where they take artists to be inspired. And along the tube of the Large Hedron Collider, there is a place where matter is, disappears. It's not destroyed. <laughs> it doesn't vanish. It, it disappears. And this is below ground. And um, they said they wanted to see what happens above ground, above this area where matter vanishes and then i don't know if there's this um this correlation between them but on top is a hill filled with flowers and life and i thought that that was so weird so interesting but yeah when i That's think about very very dissolving. interesting oh when i think about the dissolving yeah yeah who knows well they say energy can't be created or destroyed so it has to be going somewhere yeah <laughs> yeah Man. so um is there a large amount of like ritual and ceremony that you are coming into contact while studying this African culture and history? I mean, I do come across um, a lot of, uh, <clears throat> so what I think is interesting, I, I came across this, I would, I don't want to call it a mystery tradition, but they really were trying to hide all their symbols and the symbols are because if you study her hermeticism, you have perhaps uh, an overview of symbology, a syncretism where they all sort of match. Mm. And I could see the symbols, I could see what they were talking about. And I just was interested that they couldn't see that I was a practitioner as well. And I would love to hear um, what they're talking about. But you do see, you do see like glimpses from the past. But the thing with history is, that is really removed from context, except you have a living tradition. Mm. And even that living tradition might be, there might be like delineations from tracing, tracing it from, from the ancient. But yeah, I like to, I, I see some bits and glimpses of rituals or, or tradition from here and there, which I think is, is it makes it worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting that even, even today, these living traditions, are trying to protect their their knowledge and their wisdom because they don't want it being you know destroyed or or um you know like ruined yeah don't cast your pearls to the swine they say yeah exactly yeah well, <laughs> iconoclasm is sort of the the theme of the day as well so yeah i i definitely understand that Mm -hmm. I um so yeah your your travels take you all over the place um not anymore I've been trying to really like I said the stability, stability. I try my best yes even though I've been traveling but um but not not that much anymore not as much okay so you are are you just um settling in Switzerland because you're working there or are you like actually sort of like settling in there I I work in Nigeria okay so um I work remotely um okay. I'm just coming from the continent. I was in Senegal in Dakar because work took me there. But work tends to take me, which I really like, 
to um, to different places. I'm in Switzerland because I love it. I'm not far away from, from the mountains, which is, mm -hmm. uh, is great. You just go have mountain air, perform a ritual or so, like a, an LBRP or a Libaresh in the morning in the mountains. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, Crowley was I'm a mountaineer, too, so I'm sure he would appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And my girlfriend is Swiss. And yeah, okay. so we're having a nice time here. Cool. They're, they seem to have a very rich culture there um, in that whole region. So I can imagine that the people there are very, very full of life. Yeah, I mean, it depends. It's, that's, it's a bit general because mm. people, aren't, people are very different here. They do have a rich culture, like uh, richer than, say, England, because um, I feel England's culture has become very, very uh, watered down. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There yeah. is there is like this tradition of sticking to the roots here, which I like. I like um, they have this uh, this festival that I thought was interesting called Fasnacht, where <laughs> it's just after spring. So it's like midsummer, like uh, like uh -huh. dancing the the what's that that ritual, the Burning Man ritual. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, something similar, but nobody would admit that it's pagan, but it is. <laughs> uh, so there's little bits of stuff like that uh, around. But yeah, that's always fun to sort of search for and find. That's one of my favorite things to do whenever I go to another another area or region. Is I start asking about their local customs. Um, typically, there will always be some sort of local shrine that they don't call a shrine. Um, yeah. I ask them about their their, their stories and their um, like their folk tales and stuff because there's a lot of magic in those. And uh, it's funny, like you said, they don't want to admit that it has pagan roots, but I mean, for those with ears to hear and eyes to see, it's very very plain and obvious. Yes. And then, um, have you seen anything interesting? Any new cultures? or uh, practices well nothing really comes to the top of my mind but um i've always sort of studied multiple cultures i've always been sort of a syncretist so um i don't know i i'm really interested in like buddhism mm -hmm. and taoism so i would love to go into regions that that practice you know Taoism and buddhism and stuff like that but um i'm so busy here i'm not even sure i'm going to be able to go on vacation anytime soon to be able to do anything like that <laughs> mm -hmm. not, yet. not yet i'd love to though <laughs> i uh i just i find all cultures fascinating i find the idea of culture fascinating um mm -hmm. and and it's crazy to me how like it goes from something like um like like nationality and love for your culture to like feelings of like like racism and bigotry and stuff like that it's just mm -hmm. humans are so spectrum so oriented wired. yes <laughs> they're so wired to those uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i see what yeah. you mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, i just find all culture fascinating um all like i think my favorite thing about culture though are the stories I think mm. stories are just such a magical way to integrate experience and meaning into the memory. Yeah. Um, every every bold and and um, virile culture has a strong system of folklore. It seems like. Mm -hmm. So yes. are there a lot? I, are, 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 I was, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask if there's a lot of stories that you're getting to record. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, so the specific artifact that I've been working with, each each face is a different story that we can uncover. And there's stories everywhere that I've been working around with and just trying to to expand or to find or to try to link it with, because I'm really into Western esotericism, trying to link this whole picture of it yeah. all. But yeah, there, there's quite a few quite a few interesting stories. None is coming to mind at the moment. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's one there's one story where um, the Vi people in, I think, Senegal, in Liberia, they um, mm -hmm. there was this guy who said he dreamt about a writing 
script that was given to him by God. And I wouldn't think if somebody dreamt of the uh, writing script, it would become the official language, <laughs> the official way of writing, but it did. And I wonder wow. how, yeah, you know, I wonder how the dream influenced the people or how um, the person's personal viewpoint of the world, it, I, those stories, no matter how small, they inspire right. me. Yeah. Well, and and did he lay his head down to go to sleep and have a dream, or did he induce some sort of shamanic dream state to you like know. have this vision? That's all. Who, who knows? Yeah, because nobody. They always when the news comes to the public, it always is cut off. Uh -huh. you know, like Isaac Newton was an occultist, but we don't really talk about that in school. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, most of them were. I feel like. Um, like even if Tesla never drew a single circle, like he had an esoteric mindset. Yes, agreed, mm -hmm. agreed. So, Which makes me um, enjoy um, esotericism because I feel like you can work anywhere and do everything. Yes, but yes, I cut you off. No, no, no. the The time delay makes it makes it hard. Um, I was going to ask about the artifact. Is there mm -hmm. anything that you can tell us? about that like are there are they actual faces on the on the faces of the piece or are there symbols like what can you tell us about this thing um, um so the the artifacts were used as mnemonic devices that um, when you look at them it's supposed to remind you of a story so uh -huh. each time something happened in the kingdom they would be cast however it was a ritualistic process as well because the bronze casters were a sect, a mystery school, if you will, yeah. because you had to be initiated before you could start to cast bronzes. And hence, there's sit on all the stuff, there's symbols on them. And the symbols, the meaning varies depending on, because they, they say it blatantly to your face that they don't want to tell you the meaning of the symbols. I'm like, uh, why? Because yeah. you see a triangle or uh, there was one time, which I think you'd find interesting, actually, there was... Um, a circle divided into four mm -hmm. on it. And they were, I was like, what, what would this mean? And they say, it's a junction point where the spirit meets the physical. And I felt very Malkuthian about that symbol. You know yeah. what I mean? It felt very, um, very dense, especially because they're bringing this idea into the art of, it felt very meta, which I enjoyed. Yeah. yeah, I that that intention and that that integration, that is also something that I, I look at that as enchanting, essentially. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's I interesting, agree. too, because enchanting, the word enchanting actually comes from singing. And a lot of times blacksmiths and um, forge workers would sing. While they were working on to. Um, like to time out their hits and their swings or <laughs> to to um, know which part of the formula they were on. They would sing or they would chant, which just <laughs> further infuses that item in my mind. I did. I didn't. I never knew that. That's that's actually interesting to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, you said it's like a sort of a mnemonic device so that whenever you look um, at at the the side, it sort of invokes the mm -hmm. the meaning of the of the symbol and the story itself. That's a power. The fact that we can even do that is a, a whole discussion in itself. You know, <laughs> the fact that that's what we were even on about is, is quite <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Yes, that is that is awesome. So, um, yeah, was there anything else that you wanted to mention about um, like? the archaeology and and all of these um all of this information and stuff i don't want to know yeah i mean the i'm i wouldn't lie i'm looking forward to a new project because we've been working on this for two years i'm really overloaded with the mm -hmm. i mean i have quite a, a bit of the work online now but we've i've been overloaded with this talk on the Benin kingdom which, which is the kingdom i'm talking about and I, I look forward to new to new projects or new research angles. Yeah, because this okay. this this was really a lot, really really yeah. a lot to do. Is course. that is that what you were expressing had overloaded you? Was this project? Yeah, one of the I things. I mean, I, I've been talking quite a lot these past few um, these past few months as well, and I've had to make a lecture 
each time I was talking. And so that I don't say bullshit, I have to read before the lecture. Uh huh. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> okay. So has has there been anything in the last year that you sort of dropped off or fell off out of your practice? You said, I'm sort of done with this or that's not what I thought it was? Is there anything that you've sort of, I don't want to say abandoned, but anything that you've let go of in the last year? Unfortunately, like, um, and it's not because it wasn't working for me. It's just, I really, like I said before, it was very interesting to start to be a regular practitioner with somebody else around. Because yeah. before when I had my cave, you know, three times a day, <laughs> I do what I have to do. So I have not been able to make my rituals as long. So I haven't done any planetary magic, which I sometimes fear if I am not then being the best I can be. Because during my times of consistent practice, I felt like I was riding this peak. You know? uh -huh. But then I also think maybe it's part of the story to be on this uh, this valley, which is fine. But but I, I haven't I haven't had my really fulfilling ritual. Also, before I was in a relationship, I would, you know, just travel somewhere for three days, turn off my phone to this really distant location. But now that that's a bit sus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. it's funny though, like I, I think it's definitely part in my experience of the rhythms and the cycles. Like we're not meant to be at the crest of the wave the whole journey. And I think people get discouraged. They're like, where's that fire? You know, when they experience like a dark night or when they experience a valley, they're like, what am I doing wrong? I, I was in a flow state and now here I am. It's like cycles. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's a part of it. And I definitely believe that. And I've definitely experienced that as well. It's, I think it's necessary for our development. Yeah, I and, think so. Uh, and it, I, I was I just going to say, did your year mirror that? Did I what? I'm sorry. Did your year mirror that as well? Like, um, yes, did you it have did. This yes, it did. And I found that the more I regulate it, the the more smooth the transitions are. Mm -hmm. So if I don't just wait for the bottom to fall out, if I say, mm -hmm. okay, I've been going pretty hard, you know, it's 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 autumn now though or it's winter now I, I i probably need to relax and reflect i've noticed that it i don't need as much time in that mm -hmm. in that space but um that's definitely something that i experienced and it's definitely something that a lot of people i've spoken to have experienced like i, I said i don't know if it's in the air um mm -hmm. but something about cycles and rhythms seems to cause that to happen um mm -hmm. But as we, as we are pulled out of our normal, ordinary sense of things, it forces us to look at things differently, which causes an evolution a lot of times. It causes change. And as we're brought into the same space as someone else and we have less time, it, it forces us to focus on the things that are really important. Like if you've only got three minutes for a ceremony or ritual, like you're going to make sure that you put the important things in there, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's necessary. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I, so I think I told you, I said it last time I was on the call, but um, if you've ever edited a photo before, if you increase the exposure, it goes to white. If you reduce the exposure, it goes to black. The color comes from the balance of the light and the dark. So we have to appreciate all the parts of, of our story. And I'm a huge ambassador for um, appreciating the lows. That's what Saturn teaches us. Saturn yes. teaches us that you don't have to fear Saturn. That um, the lows are important. The, mm -hmm. the 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 limits show us where we can rise. It's never always male um, maleficent. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, and another thing that I've noticed too is like, we bring the light down with us. Like mm -hmm. I've met people and the depths of despair and was not able to do that without coming down into that valley, into that hell. Mm -hmm. And when I interacted with those people, they were able to come up out of that valley. 
So as a sort of middle path uh, practitioner, that's beneficial as well. Um, mm -hmm. You get to bring other people up with you from that valley. So that's yeah, kind of... Yeah, you get to be Orpheus. You yeah. go down... <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and that's that's an interesting thing too because like that's what the rhythms and cycles are like trinity neo and morpheus yeah, it's like we're yeah. going through this through this thing you know sometimes yeah. we're the helper sometimes we're the hero and sometimes we're just the you know like the psychopomp or whatever like like morpheus yeah yeah absolutely, absolutely. and that's a that's such a magical and 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 i love that i love that because it keeps things fresh and new you know, like yeah. I sort of think of myself as like a forever neophyte in a way. <laughs> yeah, I see that. And I think that's what people who are involved in masonry say, because I always wondered if it's the same three to six rituals that they have, what makes it cool over the years? And they say, because you have to go through the through the, the offices, even it's not just masonry, like other mystery schools have this yeah. as well, where you now go through all the different you be the initiator this time, you sit in the East or whatever, and mm -hmm. um, you see different aspects of yourself. Yes. And um, it's all part of this fuller journey, which I think is interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's important because, I mean, like we all have a favorite color, but like that color only exists relative to the other colors, the other tones. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, one one point you're like the hierophant of the ritual. One point you're, you know, the the initiate or the aspirant and that mirrors life, you know? So I mm -hmm. think it's important to, it's important to be grounded in our approach to magic. So, you know, mirror yeah. it to life. Yeah, it's important to be grounded in our approach to magic. Great quotes. Everybody <laughs> needs to have that. <laughs> it's yeah. it's so important. And and it's funny too, that we're talking, every every time we talk, it's like, all of the synchronicities from the last week come up because I've been experimenting with exposing um, like photos and stuff to different filters and just to be sort of artistic. Um, and yeah, and here, here we are talking about exposure. So that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, um, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just so funny how like you can almost tell your world as a magician is about to collide with another magician's because like synchronicities <laughs> Start, start popping up pop yeah mm -hmm. yeah so um how important is synchronicity like in in, in your practice and in your perspective i mean i i feel as the thing about synchronicity sometimes they can be really random but sometimes <laughs> you know it's about the knowing sometimes you know and you're like i'm not going to discount this you yeah know? And yeah so i think i think they've been it's been the thing that brought me into magic because there are some synchronicities that I could not explain and it could only have been magic. Mm -hmm. and, and hence, um, hence it, it does play a lot, a big part in my, in my practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I as well. Um, a lot of times when, when I get a synchronicity that happens, it's challenging um, because I know that it didn't just happen randomly, but it almost is always in my face. Like it's something I've been putting off mm -hmm. or it's something that I know that I should do, but I don't know how to do it. And like things will just keep popping up, pointing me toward that thing. So for me personally, synchronicity is almost like a little Tinkerbell or like a little yes. Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like Jiminy. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'll have to soon drop off the call to make some dinner. That's okay. Yes, of course. And um, I really enjoy talking to you. I hope we get to do this again next year. That okay. would be very cool to, to awesome. reflect. And All I right. did want to mention before we wrap that your beard is majestic. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. that. Well, thank you for taking the time to to chat with me and, and to reflect. And I would like to do this again in another year. I think that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah, that would be very cool. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. blessings and, and wellness to you. I hope that you are are safe and and sound. And I hope that your your relationship works works out for the best. That's that's an awesome thing. Absolutely. I know it's working out well. It's just and it's it's not really a problem. It's just interesting to to encounter that you know like growing up with my my family i didn't really care what 
anybody thought about my practices. My my siblings all thought I was a witch or some shit like that. But then <laughs> when when I encounter people who um are because I'm really, really this is my life, you know. Um, yeah, I just think it's interesting to to to, to say share I'm a yeah, yeah, to share it and to yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I don't want to take any more of your time. I uh, <laughs> again Thanks for thanks for talking and um, yeah I'm sure we'll we'll chat through messages and we stuff. Will. Yes, <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Take care, okay. buddy. Bye. Be well. You too.